Hi, I would like you to meet Terry. Terry um, is going to be part of my YouTube channel to talk about canine companions for independence. Terry has raised dogs for canine companions for how long? Since, since how long have you been doing this? Um, since about 1992. Um, we're very active with the organization and uh, actually met you while we were at, uh, I think it was a dog interaction type thing. And uh, the dog we were raising at the time had just passed her uh, canine good citizen test. And so we wanted to see what she thought of being a working dog. And we had you ask her uh, two questions. What, uh, what is, is she ready to work? And uh, why do you watch glittery things? And she answered, what's work? <laughs> <laughs> and then she said, because they're pretty. Glittery things are pretty. <laughs> Terry actually had me do a birthday party yeah. for one of her canine companion dogs that she was raising. And we had a birthday party and did animal communication sessions for all your guests. I think there was about eight dogs. Eight yeah. dogs. It yeah. was a fun party. Yeah. Fun was had by all. Yes, they really had a joyful time. Those dogs, some of them were service dogs, some were training, and a lot of pets. So, Terry. How did you get involved with this group? So um, we had um, gotten into our house in 1990, my husband and I, and we got a, a pet Labrador uh, soon after that. And we decided that we'd go to the um, Silver Bay Kennel Club dog show in February, not knowing what was there or anything. And when we walked around the corner at the booth for Canine Companions for Independence, there were uh, four 10-week-old Labrador puppies. And he fell in love immediately. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's just my love, you know. And it was such a surprise to see all that. Now, of course, Canine Companions does not do that anymore, but it was certainly a good get my heartstrings going kind yeah. of thing. And uh, the next meeting they had, I was there, and I just started helping out any way I could and, and um, found really the greatest people Obviously, they're dog lovers like I am. And, so and helping people. Helping people. But they are helping someone that's in a disability, usually a wheelchair, and the dogs go to them for free. That's, that's nice. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. And, I, and I'm sorry, how many have you raised so far? So far, um, well, we're on number 11. This is Miss Constance. She is a black Labrador. Uh, she's about 14 months, no, 16 months old. Uh, she's the first black Labrador that we've had. And she's beautiful. Oh, her temperament is perfect, and she's got all the right stuff. I'm just really proud of her. Um, like I said, she's the 11th one we've raised for the organization. So. That's, that's neat. Yeah. Since you've been in it so long, how have things changed since you started doing this? I mean, have you seen a lot of changes? Is it pretty much, you know, cookie cutter because it's the same regimen that's needed? There's a lot of... Um, success in the repetition part of it. Um, we still keep with the same breeds of dogs. We have um, graduations four times a year. Those are things that have been constant in the um, organization. Um, they originally started here in San Diego uh, at the Helen Woodward Center. Oh, really? We had uh, office space there, and they let us use their kennels. And so that's where we started um, back in 1976. Wow. And we were there for quite a while, and um, then the city of Oceanside granted us some land for a dollar a year. And so we've built our uh, new center there, a Southwest Regional Center. The headquarters for Canine Companions is Santa Rosa, California. Okay. And so I have to ask you this question because you've heard of foster failures. Oh, yeah. If I were a foster, I would be a failure. Big, f I would fail, hands down. How... How do you spend so much time with these dogs? You fall in love with them. It's obvious you, you love each and every one of these dogs and how special they are. How do you let them go? Now, granted, I know it's for a good cause, so you're going, yeah, but you know, and how, do your, how does your heart not break every single time? Well, so I'm not saying it doesn't, <laughs> but when we get the dog, we have to sign papers that the dog still belongs to CCI. Uh. So you don't have a choice. So, yeah, <laughs> that kind of know, makes it. I, I mean, you can take them to Mexico, but they're going to hunt you down, you know? <laughs> Tom, RV to Mexico. <laughs> um, I, I, I can't say I give them up because you, they go to a family that yeah. I know. And if I don't know them, they become part of my family. Oh, that's neat. 
I mean, um, that, that would, the, that, that, okay. The, I the can... dog is met for a destination. I've already agreed to that and truly believe in that. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a distant person in a service dog position or is it a family member that's living close to me? Mm -hmm. But our family has grown tremendously. And it seems like you stay dogs. in touch with all these, I a lot of them. I yeah. try to. I try to. So I don't, I, I don't even think I asked you, how long does it take to train a service dog? In our world, uh, we as puppy raisers have them from eight weeks of age until about 18 months of age. And our responsibility is to teach them the basic commands, sits, down, stays, and socialize them. Take them to the grocery store, to the movies, to museums, to, you know, things that, that would be normal so that they're not freaked out when they're with somebody in a wheelchair. And then they go to the school, and they're there for about six months. It's a long time. Train. It's a long time. So they're, they're a little over two years old by the time they're placed with the dog. How, 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 do long, how long do they usually work? Like how? Usually till they're 10, yeah. So maybe 8, sometimes 12. Depending on their health or their Yeah, right. Or the demands. To, oh, yeah, the demands right. of the person that has that the might dog. Because their demand might increase by the person. Certainly. Um, maybe in the beginning, pulling a wheelchair was easy for a two-year-old dog. Right. As you get eight, nine, ten years old, it's not as harder. easy. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I've heard of many graduates have adjusted their life so the dog can continue to work. Maybe they'll get an electric chair so the dog doesn't have to pull or yeah. something like that. Yeah. But um, Labradors and Goldens, it's not unlikely for them to live 14, 16 years. Mm -hmm. so. Especially if they're healthy and Right, and our mm -hmm. breeding Taking program care is so good, and we always feed top-quality food. So I have a question. Because they are service dogs, and obviously they have a job to do, they're helping people right. with disabilities and right. whatnot, do they ever get to be dogs? Oh, heck yeah. Especially uh, puppy, ra puppy raisers like us, we, we make sure they have some fun time. Um, Connie would be probably running around this whole area if she didn't have her vest on. Um, they, they seem to learn intuitively that that is the signal that they're working. And uh, she's at home, she's playing she's with dog. our other dog. <laughs> yeah, they're wrestling around and she's chasing each other. And yeah, That's she, nice. Yeah, Because sometimes I think people, because you're not supposed to pet service dogs, you're not right. supposed to interact with them because they're doing their job. So I think sometimes people think they never get to be a dog or a pu you know have fun as a puppy or whatever because they're always working. So it's nice to know they are having fun. Then. Yeah, and even when they're um, assigned a service job, they um, the people that are training them have all positive rewards in the training. And then when they're placed with someone, there is so much love for that dog mm. that they're always probably adored. over <laughs> adored. That's cool. As it should be. Yeah, yeah. So I know, I, at least I heard that um, service dogs are now helping PTSD um, people from the military. Yeah. So is that another avenue that opened up? It is. And um, Canine Companions was very, very honored in that the veterans, the VA, the VA Association, used a few of our dogs, like maybe 45 or 50 of our dogs, to test and implement the servicemen and women that do have the PTSD to see how their, our dogs would work for them. We've been very successful, That's and nice. it's a new way that we will be placing dogs. Aww. We've been blessed by the VA for it. And um, what will happen is the veterans can come to CCI to get their dogs. And then um, Canine Companions will uh, make sure that the dogs are well cared for. They'll still be under our Kind of supervision or... Right, yeah. right. So is that is that the case with all the types of dogs that help? So Absolutely. So they're always part of your yes, organization? Yes, for CCI, that is what we do. Uh, Canine Companions retains ownership of the dog through its entire life. And if it's a working dog, it will have um, medical coverage and the employees check on the dog at least once a year. Sometimes it's more than that. And the... Oh, um, people that are using the dogs as service dogs have to report in on a frequency that's basis, nice to know. too. And so they get medical care, too. Yes. Oh, wow, yes. that's part of it. We've been very blessed with the uh, the mystery writer, Dean Kuntz. Mm -hmm. He and his wife have set up a fund for the dogs, if there's any extreme medical um, expenses, oh. that the graduates can use that fund. They call it the Trixie Fund. Oh, that's nice. Trixie was a dog that worked for CCI and was um, retired 
and then she went to live with Dean and Gerda Coons. Oh, wow. And so he did a whole bunch of books as Trixie telling the story. Oh, that's cool. His is beautiful. That brings up another question, though. So when... When they retire, so let's say somebody's a, you know, one of the animals is a service dog for 10 years. What happens when they're no longer able to help that person? There's very many options. Um, the people that have the dog can retain the dog. So as a pet? As a pet. Um, it's kind of hard for them sometimes when the new dog comes in because they want to keep working and their heart and soul is still in on it. But That would be hard. It's not a demand requirement by CCI that they have to release the dog. They do have the first right, right to, to, keep them. to keep them. But then it's all their dime as far as the medical. Right, but right. Um, they can also, dog can go back to the puppy raiser. And then we also have... An so do you, do you get sep- oh, second dibs? Oh, 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 yeah, there's like... <laughs> How many I have you taken back? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so far we haven't taken any back, but it's been... That's uh, good, that, that means they're loved. <laughs> yes, yes, they, they wanted... To, in fact, the people in the wheelchair seem to adjust their life to make the dog more comfortable. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and then there's also, um, we find homes... A lot of times the dog is bonded with somebody, maybe a parent of the person that's in the chair or something like that. that so they stay in the too. family, though. Yeah. yeah. So as far as the different types, I didn't, I didn't even, I don't know why I never thought of this, but there's different types of ways in which the dogs are trained to help different types of needs of people. What are all the different types of yeah, avenues? Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Um, CCI is probably the Cadillac of service dog organizations. We've been around since 1975. And we have been um, blessed with different ways of being up helpful. We have a, a hearing assistance dogs. We have a full service dog. We have um, facility dogs. We have uh, what we call um, assisted service. That would be more for a child, that kind of thing. Um, hearing dogs, I think you kind of get what that's about. We usually um, train the dog to respond to bells and whistles, alarms, things like that, and the sound of the person's name. And so the dog will go to the person, knock on their knee, and then start walking away back to the person that called the name. That sort of thing is what's done. Um, If they're trained for that, then they wouldn't be trained for service work. So usually it's a separate thing for each type of work. Specific for the need of the the person. Yeah, yeah. So, And we also do... Uh, what we call a facility placement, and that can be even going to a courtroom where the dogs are companion for someone that would be testifying. Sometimes it's children that were um, abused Abused, or that kind of thing, and the dog will sit in the stand with the child down at their feet just for the comfort because that's a huge, oh, yeah. difficult thing to do. I would need it. <laughs> <laughs> I would want one, too. <laughs> yeah, you know, and and it also during the time that they're practicing the testimony, you know, the dog is there as a pal and gets to know they're not going to hurt the child, and the child gets comfortable with the mm-hmm. dog. So that's something that's kind of new on our radar, but um, we're also doing first responders. Oh, really? This is so important. Oh, just so beautiful. We have one dog that's with the Riverside Police. Yeah. So another question that I've heard people ask, and so I'm sure you get this a lot too, is why just specific dogs? Like, why don't you get dogs from shelters? Why is it always golden yeah. retrievers, golden labs, cho- <laughs> chocolate beautiful labs, black, black labs? Yes, yeah. <laughs> Canine Companions is one of the better operations when it comes to this type of work. Mm-hmm. Many of those other organizations are just starting out, and I do believe they have their heart in what they're trying to Mm -hmm. do. We started out, we had German Shepherds, we had Corgis, we had a Poodle or two. Did you hear that? A Poodle. Yes. (laughs) Those kind don't make good pulling of wheelchairs. (laughs) (laughs) But they're great for lap pups, that's for sure. But we found that People in wheelchairs are kind of um, isolated anyways, and people kind of don't talk to them. Don't talk to you know, I was taught that as a kid. You know, Don't talk to them. They're in a wheelchair kind of thing. You look at a Labrador or a Golden Retriever and those brown eyes, you want to go up and talk to somebody. Yeah. And, so, and pet them. And it kind of makes yeah. a, a, a breaking of the ice type of situation. So we found that 
Labradors and Golden Retrievers were good for that. So we started breeding for our own population. These dogs are not AKC registered or anything like that, but they are from the breeding pool that CCI has created. So, that makes sense. Yeah, so we're going to stick with that breed, obviously. So they're Labradors, Golden Retrievers, or the cross of the two. Mm -hmm. And we find that we're able to track their health. We know what to expect in some of the things that are breed-specific illnesses or disabilities, things like that. We've been able to breed out hip dysplasia from our, oh, wow. our breeding population. Um, our breeding department is well known throughout the veterinarian community and many veterinarians will come to our facility to do research because it is such a well documented uh, database. Word. Yeah, that's neat. We, we track the dogs from the time they're eight weeks, no, from the time they're birth all the way till they die. It's, you know, if somebody... That's a lot of So that's 15 of years of yeah. dogs and they track each family member too. If a female is chosen as a, bre a breeder, they know the whole specifics of everybody in her litter, as well as her parents. And so and for they, years to come. They are able to tell yeah. this one had, I don't know, some kind of strange thing happen. They decide if that's a possibility that it will happen again, and if not, then they will choose her as a breeder. Hmm. She's, in, she's in service as a breeder dog only for five years or five litters. The males have... A little longer stint in their breeding history. <laughs> Lucky guys. Yeah. <laughs> but um, the, uh, <laughs> the opportunity is there to be a, a volunteer as a breeder caretaker. Now that's some really, ex really awesome volunteering because you have to watch the mom. And when she has the puppies, you have to be there to help her. Mm -hmm. And then you have those baby puppies for eight weeks. A lot that's a lot of work. Yeah, that's it is. a lot of work. So, we really, we really reward our breeder caretaker ladies. That's and, nice. Yeah. So. So in doing this, what stories stand out the most? Like, what things have you remembered after doing this for so many years that that will you'll never forget or that stand out more than anything? This is something that just happened last year. Uh, we raised a dog named Zandra, and uh, she came from a litter where. She was one of three that were left of the nine. She was very special when we raised her because of her family history, you know. But we just knew something good was coming from her. And she found a girl, 28 years old, independent as heck, and they bonded right away. They lived here in, Cal in the Carlsbad for quite a while, and then they moved back east because they fell in love. <laughs> and they went to Virginia. <laughs> Well, last year they got married, and we took our RV, and we drove across the country and went to the wedding. It was just a beautiful thing. They put us at the family table. <laughs> Sorry. That's nice, though. <laughs> it always gets to me. And, I'll give you a clean so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I've told the story enough. You'd think I wouldn't be that way. But, <laughs> yeah, Danny and Zandra were quite the team. They've been in some um, publications. They've also done some radio uh, she's a very avid spokesperson in regards to the um, disability community. Um, she did a, a video with dancing, and she's really quite dynamic. And the dog just goes with her everywhere they go. They, on the airplane, the dog carries the ticket or the oh, nice. bottle. <laughs> and um, when they get to the hotel, the dog takes the clothes out of the suitcase and puts it in the drawers. Wow. And she's just, you know, she just... Ready to go. Danny says, let's go. She just, how Did fast? she remember you when you visited? When we saw her on the day of graduation, she just was over the Aww. moon happy to see us. Which is part of her training not to get excited, <laughs> but we're able to break the Sometimes rules. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta day, do, yeah. right? Because I hadn't seen her in six <laughs> months. They go to school for six months. Yeah. And we don't see them at all when they're in school. So so that was pretty exciting yeah. to have something like that happen. That is. Yeah. That is. Yeah. Um, there's also all across the country. Is, that's our graduation day, August 9th. Now, can anybody go? Absolutely. To oh, so anybody Absolutely. can join. Yes. Oh, nice. Yes, it's free to the public. And you'll get a good idea about what our organization is like and what we do with our dogs because there's eight-week-old puppies, oh, yeah, <laughs> as well as 
graduating service dogs at the graduation. Awesome. So if, if people want to get involved, there's volunteers. Yes. So you can volunteer. You can obviously donate. So yes. where, where do they go to find out more information, to find out how to volunteer, to find out how to donate? Where do they, where should they go? We're at um, cci.org, O-R-G. cci.org. Canine Companions for Independence.org, cci.org. Yes. Thank you so much, Terry, yes. for sharing all your experiences. You, I mean, what you do is amazing. Your group is amazing. And she's